You're listening to More Than a Song, episode 349. Hello, and welcome to this episode of More Than a Song. My name is Michelle Nizat, and this is the podcast dedicated to helping you discover the truth of Scripture, hidden in today's popular Christian music. My goal is to teach you to connect portions of God's Word with the songs you're singing along with on the radio, to help you meditate on truths that will transform your way of thinking and ultimately your life. This week's song was a request from my middle school daughter. Peace by Hillsong Young and Free is a song they sing in youth group, but it is also full of scripture, making it a perfect candidate for the podcast, as well as a good option for your playlist. So before we dive in, let's listen. In researching the story behind the song, I discovered that the songwriters had mental health in mind when they wrote it. Anxiety and depression, these are not only issues for teens and young adults, which is generally the market for Hillsong Young and Free, but it is also very pervasive in all of society. And I do want to pause and make a clarifying statement about what I'm going to be calling, uh, what I'm going to be discussing as depression and anxiety today. I recognize that there is a difference between clinical and circumstantial anxiety, and I am in no way diminishing the effectiveness or need for clinical help uh, for clinical cases. And so when I say anxiety on today's podcast, what I have in mind is circumstantial anxiety, the anxiousness we feel for various reasons, in our circumstances. And as always, we are going to be using scripture as our guide for this discussion, but I wanted to go ahead and clarify that up front. Now, the main thing is that the Bible addresses this topic of anxiety. Now, we're not going to be following the bite of exploring a topic today, bite uh, being an acronym for Bible interaction tool exercises. We've, we have been exploring topics recently on the podcast. And if you want to go ahead and follow that path on your own, I hope that some of the exercises that I share today, a few more bites will equip you in practical ways on that journey. Uh, but again, bites are Bible interaction tool exercises. And again, these are just exercises I use in my own study time to keep my time in God's word varied so that I can get the most out of it. I keep my antenna up all the time to try new things. Of course, I do have my set of kind of go-to bites that that, that I use that that serve me well. And in fact, if you subscribe to my website at michellenizat.com, I've created a resource, a one-page resource of my top five bites with explanations on how to incorporate them into your own study time. And so you can get that um, on the website again, michellenizat.com. Of course, you can also just take notes or access each week's show notes uh, also on the website website just to see what bites I use from week to week, whatever works best for you. My goal is for you to interact with God's word. Now, today we are going to use inspiration from our lyrics to dive into Paul's letter to the Philippians. Why Philippians? Well, because our lyrics refer to anxiety, as I mentioned, and a peace far beyond all understanding is what the lyrics say. And Philippians 4 uh, verses 6 and 7 says this, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. As always, I want music to inspire our study and interaction with God's word. We are using it as a vehicle for inspiration. If we are discerning in our music choices, the lyrics will reflect God's truth. And as always, I want to warn you to beware of replacing God's revealed word with music. The moon does shine, but it is not the source of light. It is merely a reflection of the sun. The best Christian lyrics reflect the truth of God's word. But remember, they are not the source. 
So when these lyrics reminded me of Philippians chapter four, I used the bite of reading in context. And these are uh, in these short epistles. I generally make it my practice to read the entire letter. All right. So epistles is just another word for letter. This uh, Philippians is a letter from Paul to the church at Philippi. And I mean, you wouldn't get a long letter from a friend and start on page four, would you? I mean, even if your friend had said something profound that you wanted to really ponder, it would not be in complete separation from the rest of the text. Likewise, make it your habit to read the epistles all the way through before you zero in on a particular section. I also followed the bites of repetition and reading in several translations. It was easy to do because this is a four chapter book. I mean, Romans might be a little bit harder to do. I know it's a letter as well, but it's a lot longer and a lot more complex. But so I read these four chapters once a day for several days. And each time I read Philippians, I would choose a different translation. This made it easier for me to focus on the overall message Rather than getting lost in some familiar verses that I've memorized over the years, I really tried to take it in kind of as a whole letter. Now, another bite is to read an overview or consult an overview of the book that you're studying. I generally do this after I've read the text several times on my own because I want to see themes rise up for myself before I see what another commentator suggests as the themes. However, if this is a new process to you and you just can't see themes for yourself, you just can't see uh, what uh, you can't create the outline on your own at, at the beginning, there are many resources to assist you. If you have a study Bible, for example, then there is an introduction at the beginning of each book. It's going to give you historical background. It's going to give you themes and even that outline that I've discussed. And of course, there are online resources that are free. If you don't have a study Bible, I encourage you to check those out. Um, uh, blueletterbible.com is a really good one for some overviews and introductions and things like that. Now, one of my favorite resources these days is a book. It's called How to Read the Bible Book by Book, and it's by Gordon and Fee. Um, there is a breakdown of every book of the Bible in this book, and it will give you some of that orienting data that I talked about, but it also gives you specific advice for reading each book, and then it gives you a walkthrough of that book by main sections. It's written in a very accessible way, meaning it's not overly academic in its language, and it, it, it would be a really great addition to your Bible study resources. I'll go ahead and link to it in the show notes for you. Now, I want to read the emphases of this book as documented by Gordon and Fee in that book, How to Read the Bible Book by Book, and they say the emphases are this, Paul's and the Philippians' partnership in the gospel Christ as the key to all of life from beginning to end, knowing Christ by becoming like him in his death and sacrificing oneself for others, rejoicing in Christ even in suffering, unity through humility and love, and the pursuit of the final prize. Now, I highlight these things because what we're going to be focusing in on is in light of all these other things. Because what we seek is peace and freedom from anxiety. That's why this section of verses that we're getting ready to study is so meaningful to us. But Christ is key to all of life, including this peace that we seek. And we know Christ by becoming like him in our sacrifice for others which may very well be the source of our anxiety. Uh, we must rejoice even in suffering. We'll, we'll learn how that can even be possible. And all of this while keeping our eye on our heavenly citizenship, which is our final prize. So you see, if you're missing it, if all you do is sing about peace that passes understanding without really understanding where that truth comes from and the richness of the actual text of God's word. And the truth that truth is incomplete without understanding it in light of the whole book that it's taught in and then even that is still incomplete without viewing it through the lens of scripture as a whole now that one can't be achieved in a week of study but what i want you to do is start now by reading and interacting with and meditating on and applying god's word to your life and when you do that today and tomorrow and the next day 
and the next day, then you're going to find that it leads to a lifetime um, that then leads to greater and greater understanding of scripture as a whole. So if you follow the bites of reading in context by reading the entire letter, for example, reading repetitively, reading in a variety of translations, reviewing an overview of the book, then you can zero in on the section that we're going to discuss today on today's podcast. So if you do all of those things, then you will be following all the bites that I used to prepare for today. Now, in the English Standard Version of the, that translation, the ESV, verse 6 that I quoted earlier is in the middle of a paragraph. So let's back up and read the entire paragraph and then the one after it. So it says in verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And then let's go ahead and read the next paragraph because I think it's also related. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about those things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. So I want to ask you this question. What causes anxiety in your life? I uh, recently heard a message by Pastor Leonce Crump Jr. out of Atlanta on this very passage of scripture as I was studying for the podcast. So uh, that w- it was really timely. He noted that anxiety has never really been his weak point, but that he finds that in this crazy year called 2020, uh, the inability to protect and solve and guard has uh, those that he loves ha- and, and issues Uh, It's caused him circumstantial anxiety that he's just not even familiar with. And I'm sure that you can easily write down a list of what causes you anxiety. In fact, this might be the week that you need to pull out that bite of journaling your dialogue with God. Even if you don't normally journal, take out a sheet of paper or a notebook and just try it just this one time. You don't have to commit to a lifetime of journaling, okay? I'm just, it's just really good to mix it up. And so I'm encouraging you to, to do that this week. But what can, can you identify um, areas or potential areas of anxiety or identify the areas of anxiety that you know of in your life? But then let's go back to the scripture here. Let's go back to Philippians that we're reading and rereading and rereading. And um, let's identify areas of anxiety for the original recipients of this letter. And then perhaps you can jot those down um, in your journal as well. So maybe you'll make a list of things that cause you anxiety and then kind of make a list of what you see in this scripture and maybe compare the two. Okay, so when I go back and I reread Philippians again with this question in mind of what might be causing them anxiety, I can use the bite of making a list to log my discoveries. I love making lists. So um, here are some things I came up with. And you may identify even more when you read for yourself. These are just the ones that I came up with. So first area that might cause anxiety is Paul's imprisonment. Um, It is obvious by this letter that there's deep affection between Paul and the church at Philippi. It would only be natural for his imprisonment to cause them anxiety. And, And I just want to follow up with this. When we or those we love are in bondage, this causes us anxiety. All right, so that's one one reason. Uh, another source, potential source of anxiety for the, the church at Philippi is Paul's competition. Now, Paul mentioned people preaching the gospel out of envy and rivalry. And this can anger and frustrate those that love him, leading to potentially consuming uh, anxious thoughts. I think this falls into the category of church wounds. I don't know if any of you have ever had church wounds, but church wounds can cause great anxiety. All right, another source, potential source, is persecution and conflict. Do I even have to define that for you? I mean, here's what Paul says in verse 29. uh, For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. It's been granted to you? 
I mean, I'm not sure I want to think of persecution and conflict as being granted as if it were a gift. And yet I think that's what God's word is saying here. And so this is an opportunity, I think, for it to let let God's word change the way I think. It really has challenged me this week. All right, another potential source of uh, anxiousness is disunity. It's reflected here in this in this letter to the Philippians. There is so much good instruction in chapter two, but here's a, a little bit of Paul's instruction beginning in verse three. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. What great, uh, what great instruction for us. But disunity among believers can cause great anxiety. It's, it's always so much better when we get along, isn't it? Now, these truths are so powerful. Of course, just because you follow them does not guarantee that the person you are in disagreement with will respond positively. Um, so disunity can cause anxiety. Another potential source uh, right there in this letter is grumbling and disputes. Uh, It's somewhat related, I guess, to disunity. Check out Paul's instructions here in verse 14. Do all things without grumbling or disputing so that you may be blameless and innocent. Children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life. So that in the day of Christ, I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Right there, it tells us we are lights. We, we need to have a different perspective. We, we need to get over ourselves. But in the meantime, grumbling and disputes, these, this can be a source of anxiety. Um, another potential source, a sick friend. Epaphroditus was sent from Philippi to Paul, and then he got sick and nearly died. And in chapter 2, we read in verse 26, Paul says, For he, meaning Epaphroditus, has been longing for you all and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. And indeed, he was ill, near to death. But God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. So our our love and our concern for sick friends and family can cause great anxiety. Um, Sometimes we can be anxiously worried about friends who were worried about loved ones, right? So verse 28, I am the more eager to send him, Epaphroditus, therefore that you may rejoice at seeing him again and that I may be less anxious. Isn't that interesting? Paul's anxiety will be relieved when the Philippians get to see Epaphroditus again. All right, another potential source is religious, but not biblical, requirements. Uh, In this time, there were some in the church insisting that followers of Christ be circumcised. They were adding religious requirements and putting their confidence in these things, in these acts, rather than in faith in Christ. So extra biblical or and non-biblical religious requirements can easily cause anxiety. And then finally, um, I saw disagreements in the body of Christ. It's so hard when there's discord in the church. And I've lived through many seasons like this. Let me tell you that these seasons are definitely full of stress and anxiety. The church at Philippi seems to be dealing with this, or at least a few members of it. In chapter uh, four, it says, I entreat Euodia and I entreat Sintichi to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. So he specifically lists out a couple of ladies who seem to be in disagreement because he's specifically asking them to agree. And so this, of course, can also cause anxiety. And this that particular um entreaty is listed right before the context of what we're going to be studying. Now, it is in this context of all of these potential sources of anxiety that Paul says to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now here we see specific instructions that lead to a specific promise in scripture. And let's look at what we're supposed to do. 
The best way I know how to do that is to circle or list out all the verbs. The bite of making a list, of course, again, is one of my favorites. Something happens when I slow down and process things on a list. But when I did that, I discovered these steps. Here are the steps. Rejoice. Rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known. Do not be anxious. Offer prayer and petitions with thanksgiving and let your requests be made known to God. I'm going to go back to that reasonableness. I did a quick word study on that one. Some translations say gentleness. And uh, the word study said gentle in the sense of being truly fair by relaxing overly strict standards in order to keep the spirit of the law. In other words, uh, again, not being overly legalistic, but being reasonable and uh, gentle. So anyway, let's sum it up. Rejoice and pray. That, that will lead to the peace of God guarding your heart. And the peace of God passes all understanding. Because you notice that it doesn't say it will bring peace to your external circumstances. But rather that God's peace will guard your heart. So my question is why do we neglect prayer when we so clearly have this promise of peace that we desire? And I think there could be many reasons, but I believe mostly it is our own sense of self-sufficiency. We're always trying to figure things out on our own instead of bringing our burdens to the throne of grace. And notice it doesn't say letting our requests be made known to God leads to instant solutions. But the promise is that the peace that passes all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And what about our minds? When, when we're in times of stress and anxiety, we tend to focus on the source of our stress and anxiety. We roll it around in our minds. We talk about it with our friends. We meditate on it. But when we read or we keep reading in Philippians, we see Pastor Paul sharing some more direction in verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Pray and change what you're thinking about. And might I add, where you might be able to find things that are true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, excellent, and worthy of praise, where can you find those kinds of things? God's word. Think on God's word. Meditate on it. Roll it around in your mind. Talk about it with your friends. Think on these things. And then my final exhortation comes straight from Paul, verse 9. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Practice rejoicing. Practice praying with thanksgiving. Do these things. Don't just read about them. Do them. Practice them. And there's yet another promise. The God of peace will be with you. You'll get God's unsurpassable peace and you get God himself. So what's next? Read all of Philippians multiple times this week. Try reading in a variety of translations. Look for hints at what might cause anxiety in the lives of the church members at Philippi and discover if anything you discover compares to what you're dealing with. Um, Follow Paul's instructions as it relates to your anxiety. Rejoice and pray. Practice these things and you will not only get God's peace, but God himself. And then while you're in God's word this week, let me know how you're doing. Email me, michelle at michellekneezat.com. Hop on Twitter at michellekneezat or Instagram at michellekneezat or on Facebook, Michelle L. Nizat is my public page. And let's talk about what you're learning. Now, if you haven't joined the 30-Day Music Challenge yet, I highly recommend it. The challenge is to listen exclusively to Christian music for 30 days. You're never too late to jump in. Just submit your name and email address at michellekneezat.com forward slash 30 day challenge and you're in. Now, before I tell you what song will be featured next week, I want to thank any new subscribers who've subscribed recently, like Aaron from Alaska, Tara from New Mexico, Linda from California, Cynthia from Texas, Jeff from Ohio, Tiffany from Tennessee, Keisha from Maryland, and Carrie from Wisconsin. Welcome. And then I want to add, almost every week I get a new subscriber from the Philippines, and I want to take a moment to say to my many listeners in the Philippines affected by the super typhoon Goni that has caused such loss and devastation, I just want you to know that you are in our prayers.
Now, new subscribers to my website benefit from a one-page resource of my top five bites that I've used on the podcast. I mentioned that earlier. It's a great place to start. So go ahead and subscribe at michellenizat.com. You'll get that plus the show notes delivered to your inbox every Monday. So convenient and any extra resources I create from time to time. And then I just want to ask a question. Have you had a chance to write a review in iTunes for the podcast yet? Of course, this really encourages me, but it also helps me stay visible to new listeners. And as always, if you take the time to review my podcast, I will take the time to personally thank you right here on the podcast. Like Dr. Alicia Parker, who writes better than I expected. She says, I thought this podcast would focus on the lyrics of songs and explain why and how the artist came up with them, but it doesn't. What Michelle does is even better. She uses the lyrics of popular Christian music as a springboard to scripture where she dives into God's word and teaches relevant truth in an understandable way. Using bites, she expertly leads listeners through how how to understand the Bible passage that connects with the song she's highlighted. This has become one of my new favorite podcasts. Ah, thank you so much for this review. I'm honored to be a new favorite. It thrills me to know that what I'm doing resonates with you. So thank you so much for that kind review. Of course, you can listen to the podcast directly on my website at michellenizat.com through iTunes or the Apple Podcast app. You can follow on Spotify or through Stitcher Radio or your podcast listening app of choice. Well, that's it for this episode of More Than a Song. Next week, I will be using Famous For, I believe, by Taryn Wells to lead us to scripture. If you liked this episode, however, would you mind sharing it with others? I've made it really easy. With just one click, you can share via Facebook, Twitter, or email. Just head over to michellekneesat.com forward slash 349. Until next time, take time to meditate on God's word and consider his ways.